Today on Follow the Compass North, we're going to be restoring this old 32 inch felling axe from Council Tools. This is my utility axe, and by utility axe, I mean I use it and don't take care of it. I chop whatever I need to chop and I throw it in the back of the garage for it to rust and get covered in mildew and generally deteriorate, which is not my recommendation for proper tool care. However, when I need to chop through a root or chop into the ground or get this anywhere near stones or things that can damage it, I am not going to be sacrificing my Gransford Brooks. I'm gonna be using this utility ax until it fails. And fail it has. We have a major crack in the handle here, which means I'm gonna to have to cut this off drill it out, mount a new handle and wedge it. We have some decent pitting of rust, which means I'm gonna to have to sand this down, cold blue it. And we've got some notches right here in the blade, which means I'm gonna to have to reset the bevel, hone with the whetstone, and generally apply a decent amount of maintenance to this before I can throw it in the back of my garage to rust and mildew again. So now it's time to sit back, relax, enjoy the music, and watch me sweat over this for the next three to four hours. Holy moly, that was the most frustrating handle replacement I have ever done. Usually I take this and put it in a vise and drill it out and take a metal punch and a hammer and punch out the old handle and it's quite easy. But trying to do it here uh, in front of the camera without a vise, trying to drill out the wedge and, and pry it out and knock it out, uh, it got to the point where it was just wasting too much time. So I paused the video, went out and knocked out the rest of the handle and the vise. I highly recommend doing that. And then I did the fit up off camera as well because we don't have the vertical space here. I'm not super happy with the fit up. There's a significant gap right here that wasn't able to get filled. Uh, when making your own handles, you're able to customize it to each head of each implement. This one being a catch-all, uh, just didn't have the right amount of material up front. So I might be taking this off in the future, but since it's my utility axe, I'm probably gonna use it until it starts to break or become dangerous again. Once I got this in, I threw the wedge in the top. I do not use the metal wedges 
that come with. I throw these in a drawer until this does loosen up a little bit, and then I'll throw the metal wedges in to see if it remedies that without having to replace the head. If you throw the metal wedges in right away, sure, it's nice and tight and strong. However, if you do get anything to loosen up, you have nowhere to go from there. Burnish this down uh, with the 120 grit sandpaper. We could have ground it all the way down and then hand uh, sanded it until it was a mirror finish and made it beautiful, but again, a utility axe I'm not going to spend that much time on. If I did make this mirror polished and then blued it, it would be beautiful enough to be a showpiece, and then I would hesitate to use it to chop through roots and ground, ground clearing once again. I also sanded down the handle because the varnish that they put on these, the polyurethane, or uh, it gets very slick when wet. So I, I opted for a sanded finish with a little bit of oil to seal it. And then I just let the oil of my hands work it uh, over the course of a couple of years. And it ends up with a nice grip, uh, nice and sturdy, and it doesn't get super slick in wet conditions. The downside with that is it leaves it open to things like mold. My previous handle had plenty of mold on it because it was left outside for six months and we're in the south right now so it uh, molded up pretty fast pretty quick. So this is something I'm going to store inside from now on. Uh, wedged in, cut off the excess wedge. I do leave a little bit of the wood sticking out of the top so that it flanges and it's kind of like my video where I did the whipping on the rope. You want to have a little bit here so it flanges open and it helps secure it. If you cut it straight with the metal, I find that when it gets loose, there's more of a chance for it to slip off completely. This gives me a little bit of a, a little bit to work with here. So that flange will stop this from wiggling off a little bit easier. I took a crosscut file, the standard file that I use for all my knife sharpening videos, set the bevel on this. I realized I had never set the bevel before, so it took quite a bit of filing to get this set. And then we did honing with the, with the uh, uh, round whetstone. This round whetstone, like you see in my knife sharpening video, has a rough side for taking off burrs, and then a fine side for the final honing of that edge, which we do at a slightly more increased angle because we're just trying to hit the tip of the edge at that point. Now we're not going drastically, we're not dulling this thing, but just a little bit more of an angle. and you hone that edge. And you do the same amount on one side as you do on the other. Once we're all sharpened up, you saw me clean it off with a little bit of alcohol. Uh, that's to degrease it, take anything off of there. Uh, carb cleaner, other degreasers work just fine. Dawn dish soap and water, if you don't mind uh, taking the time to let it dry, works pretty well as well. And then I hit it with some of this Brownells Oxfo Blue. Now, this is liquid gun bluing that you can get for about 20 bucks for four ounces. I use it on my knife making and I use it on my axe work as well. I find it works really, really well to give it a nice blued finish with no, uh, uh, no heating needed since it's a cold blue. You just rub it on there, burnish it with a little bit of steel wool. I've got some heavy gauge steel wool here. Now I could burnish the edge a little bit more, but I didn't want to cut myself or dull it, so that one's going to stay a little bit blotchy. Then you burnish this right off and you're good to go. Now I'm not affiliated with this company, I just find that it works pretty well and you could order it on Amazon, so it makes it easy for me. Now that we got the blue completely applied, I oiled it with just a little bit of oil, same as the handle, just to burnish it up, make it look nice and glossy. I'm hoping I get a nice reflection there in the camera. Uh, it should look significantly better than it did at the beginning of the video. If you enjoyed today's content, please let us know below. Uh, it's always nice to get comments on these videos. We try to answer as many questions as we can. Uh, if, if you have questions, leave them below. Uh, if we cannot get to you or we cannot answer that question, we're probably saving it for a future video. We're compiling a bunch of the good ones and doing a Q&A session where we just sit down, talk about the channel, talk about our goals, talk about where we see us going in the future. Uh, also, a huge shout out to all those channels out there who do restoration projects because I did not realize how frustrating it was to focus on the camera work and the actual restoration at the same time. Most of the time I can just get down and dirty and grind and work and take breaks and drink water, but you really have to manage yourself, manage your equipment all at the same time, which brings a whole new level of difficulty to this. So I've got some growing to do and I'm excited for it. 
Uh, so leave a comment, hit like, subscribe. If you loved it, share it, check out our other videos. Anything you do that helps the channel is greatly appreciated. Thank you and have a great day.